Hi, I'm Sibran Dijkstra. I'm the proud CEO and founder of DJ Studio. A DAW to make cool DJ edits, DJ mixes and mashups. Let me show you. Here in the top you see the music sources that you use. I have configured it for Apple Music, mixed in key, Recordbox, Serato, Beatport and Beatsource. Of course the other DJ applications are also supported. We have a live connection to the Recordbox database including its smart playlists. Looking in Recordbox you see the same playlists and the same content. Let's select some tracks to add to your mix. The concept of DJ Studio is that you can select all tracks that you like in your mix and then we use a function called Auto Mix. Let's select some tracks from BeatSource as well. We now have 36 tracks and we add them to the mix. In the playlist screen you see all the tracks that you have added to your mix. And in the bottom you see the tempo lane. And you see the tempo is going up and down. Of course you want to order your set on tempo but also harmonically. Ordering the tracks can be a difficult job. Especially if you have a fixed list of tracks that you want to play. And of course you can drag the tracks and make them more or less compatible with each other. But I'm now only ordering on key and you want to order on key and on tempo. So that's where Automix comes in. With Automix we created an algorithm that can help you order your playlist on tempo and on key. Uh, this ordering is done according to the Camelot wheel. We can do fuzzy mixing where we go one number up or one number down, only one semitone difference, so technically they will always sound well. But we can also mix on mood and the mood mixing is done based on the mixed in key ID where you have more options. Those options don't need to be technically perfect, but they can give a lot of energy to the crowd when you play these tracks back to back. You can set some transition presets, but those are only presets. The real DJing is up to you. For the playlist ordering in Automix, you have the options to order it for mood mixing or for fuzzy mixing. You can prioritize on BPM, you can prioritize key the other way around, or you can do somewhere in the middle. You can lock your first or your last track. Let's say I'd like to open my set with Moon Dancer and Moon Dancer is 4A. So I tell the algorithm I want you to start with 4A in a tempo of 125 BPM. So now we give the algorithm 15 seconds time to come up with the best possible solution. So in no time we made 250 million calculations. So now you see the ordering of your playlist. It starts with a 4A key in 125 and over here you see it stays in 125, goes up and then goes down a little and then it ends with 136 BPM. Perfect for my playlist. The cool thing about an harmonic compatible list is that you don't need to worry about key clashes and going off tone. So now you can simply go into your list and start mixing. In the studio view you see the tracks aligned in deck 1 and deck 2. The decks are there to control the tempo. If you want to add other tracks or other samples, we have sample lanes in here. If you look at the track, you see in this track, this is phrase information that is coming from Recordbox. You can zoom in on the tracks until you see the waveforms. Since we are always spot on on the beat, you can do easy editing. So if I'd like to remove this part of the music, I'll delete it and you see this little cutting in here. And when I play it, you will hear it spot on on the beat. Another interesting option is if you want to make a shorter version of your track, you can select these phrases, shift, hold it, delete this one. And now I shorten this track and here is my little build up. And you see there is a perfect drop after this build up. This blue window is a transition window. This is where the transition happens between the two tracks. You can grab it and once you grab it you see yellow markers popping up. These are phrase markers that the AI of DJ Studio found and are hinting for you where you can do the transition. So you can really fast place this uh, window at the place where you'd like to start your transition for your mix. When you select this blue window it zooms in and you see the lines in here. Here you see a volume crossfade of 50%. You can set the crossfade for the volume. You can set the length of the transition. I think 16 is also fine. And I can grab the window over here and you see how easily it snaps to the position where you want to do the transition. And let's have a listen. have a good 
transition. I could leave out some beats in here. So when I uh, leave out four beats, add an effect. Let's add a riser in here to give it some more tension and have a listen. So you see, it's really easy making a transition. The cool thing about the automation connected to the transition window is that I can decide to do the transition in another place of the track without having to draw in all the automation again. So I can drag this track and let's say I want to have it one phrase earlier. And let's have a listen how this goes. Okay, so now I do have an issue. I have a vocal clash. I have two vocals going at the same time. Well, we have something cool for you and that's stem separation. If you press this button in the top of the transition window, you see the drum, the bass, the melody and the vocal in the individual tracks. Clicking on the transition window, we can zoom in. So here you clearly see the vocal clash. Uh, let's have a listen over here. I'll solo the track and well, this is the vocal that needs to be removed. Well, you can remove the vocal by switching it off or by grabbing the automation and placing it somewhere over here. Uh, for the drums, we have the same situation, but I'd like to do a drum swap. So I can place a drum like this or I can grab it on the outside. And now you see I can do a drum swap. Let's have a listen. And you see, we swap the drums perfectly. Only this part is a little bit boring because there's no vocal anymore. So what we can do, we can grab the vocal over here and make a copy to one of the sample lanes. And I'll uh, shorten this vocal, bring it over here. Uh, let's have a listen. So here's the want me. If you want to add effects, we have an effects tab. Put some reverb in there. And I have a super cool transition. Stem separation works fine on transitions, but you can also grab parts of the stems and use them to already introduce the tracks. So let's have a listen over here. And I'd like to have a copy of this part of the music, but then only the vocals. And this vocal, I'd like to introduce it already in the Murder on the Dance Floor track. Is that cool? Hey, and if the break is taking too long, no problem. Simply go somewhere in the track, uh, grab a part and copy this um, drum to the sample lane. Open up the second sample lane, grab the sample, Put the sample in here, grab the repeat button and repeat it until the end of the break that's somewhere over here and uh, you have your bridge. Can I be Hopsa. And let's have a listen. So you see how easy it is to make a mashup and to uh, combine uh, tracks with each other. Looking in a studio, you simply click the next transition and you can start working on the transition of the next two tracks. Well, when you have done all the transitions of your tracks, you can export your mix. You can export it as a local file. We can make an MP3 or a WAV file, or we can even make a video file for you. Uh, we can also export it as a DJ set and if you want we can export hot cues where we exactly tell you where you need to start the transition, where you need to do the bass swap and where you end the transition. Really cool if you're a beginner. And we can export your complete project to an Ableton project file giving you a one-on-one -on -one copy of the DJ Studio project in Ableton if you like to do your mastering over there. And of course, you can export your mix to Mixcloud or Soundcloud or YouTube. I hope this video encourages you to start playing with DJ Studio and start playing with music instead of playing music. I hope you have a lot of fun.